Let's pray together. Father, You are good, and You have done good always. You've been good to us, and we thank You. We'd like to praise Your name and honor You for all You are in our life. Enable us to do that this hour in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Let's have a youth message. Before we say our memory passage, what is your job? Obey your parents respectfully. That is your job. Just like someone who goes and works on the railroad and they have a job to do at the railroad or someone who works on cars or diesel engines, that's their job. Your job <coughs> is to obey your parents respectfully. Now God will take care of the next job you need, but he'll, you do that first job. Okay. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. And we talked about seropods. There's all different kinds of these type of dinosaurs that were found skeletal remains of. And um, we even found uh, find them in the national park. We find them in places way up high on the uh, rock. We see they're drawn by people and in different cultures. In, in Peru, we see uh, one of these type of dinosaurs drawn with people all around it with spears. They're going to kill him. And they wouldn't. They said, well, I wonder how old that is. It must be awful old because this is supposed to be dead 65 million years ago. Not true. And so they took the paint and they were able to take it very carefully off the wall uh, and they checked it out. And those dinosaurs lived around the time David in the Bible. So, I always wish we still had dinosaurs around. And I found out we do. Can you name any dinosaurs? Yeah. Okay. Dinosaurs. What? Dinosaurs. Triarmsos Rex. I don't think we have any of those still alive, but yeah, Triarmsos Rex. How about an alligator? That's as much a dinosaur as you'll ever find, or a crocodile. Okay. Well, what, what was that? A Komodo, dragon. Komodo dragon. Excellent. That's still alive. A Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus. <laughs> you know. Yeah. There are so many dinosaurs now, more than when I was a kid. They had basic dinosaurs, and I played with dinosaurs and different things. And Learn some dinosaur names. But there's a whole lot more now. It took a long time for them to take all those bones. A lot of them were not together. They were all in a jumble. Take all those bones to figure out which bone goes where. Well, think the Bible says anything about dinosaurs? Oh, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Uh, in the book of Job, now if you look at this book, J-O-B, you'd call it what? Job. job, yeah, that's what we say. We say job, and most people look at it and say job, but that's actually a person's name. It's Job, and if we go to Job, chapter forty, it says, "Look at Behemoth." That's what God called this dinosaur, Behemoth, which I made along with you. God made the dinosaurs on day six. He also made man on day six and which feeds on grass like an ox. What strength it has in its loins, what power in the muscles of its belly. Right here in these <coughs> legs and in its belly, that's tremendous power, why? It ran along with the tail in the air. Oh yeah. That's a heavy tail. That's a big tail. All right. Its tail sways like a cedar. See these cedar trees? These are the green trees during the wintertime. They kind of grow that way, and they get pretty tall. And they get 
pretty good size. And the wind blows hard and they sway. And it says, its tail is like a cedar. Can you see that? Okay. How many elephants have cedar looking tails? None. None, that's right. And sometimes in the Bible, if you have a little foot on the back, they say, well, maybe that's an elephant. Well, that's not an elephant. The elephant's strength is not in its belly or in its legs. Where is the elephant's strength? Um, on the back. Its back has a tremendous strength. That's why it's has quite a bit of strength in its trunk, which does a whole lot of things with its trunk. Are elephants grass eaters also? Sort of, yes. Sort of, sort of is right, because one time they found that it, if you make a man up, they'll eat you. They had one in a zoo and couldn't find the zookeeper. And uh, eventually they did. Yeah. Okay. It's bones or tubes of bronze. It's limbs like rods of iron. It ranks first among the works of God, yet its maker can approach it with his sword. Okay, God can get right up to it. He won't do anything to God because God has all power. It says that it has very strong bones and it's number one among the animals. Land animals, number one. Now there's a bigger one in the sea. Uh, but that's a different one that comes up next. The hills bring their produce and all the wild animals play nearby. Under the lotus plant, lotus plants grow in the water, it lies hidden among the reeds in the marsh. The lotuses conceal it in their shadow. The poplars by the stream surround it. A raging river, a river in flood stage. If this animal got into a river in flood stage, He'd just have his head up there and be just fine and walk right up against the waters because it's so strong. It is secure, though the Jordan should surge against its mouth. Can anyone capture it by the eyes or trap it and pierce its nose? No. They could kill it, but it's not going to easily be trapped. Or if, oh, if it were trapped, what would it do? break out instantly. It would break out. It has the strength to break out. Okay, so there's about there's around 15 places in the Bible that talks about dinosaurs. But people didn't know how to translate it. So sometimes they say, well, there's owls around. It's not an owl. And there's one word that's used for all, for all dinosaurs. And about 15 times it's used in the Bible. Okay, that's enough there. But God is able to take and give us dinosaurs that we can enjoy. I kind of hope we'll have dinosaurs when the Lord comes back. Wouldn't it be fun to ride dinosaurs? Oh, for sure. Yeah, it sure would be. It would be. It's kind of like, you know, when we get into the millennium, that's the time when Jesus reigns on planet Earth and He rules everything. And it's going to be fun to ride on dinosaurs, to play with poisonous snakes, but they won't hurt you. There all kinds of things to do. It's going to be really fun. All right. What are you? What is your job? Obey our parents respectfully. Obey your parents respectfully. That's the only job you got. Okay, they may give you some job to, but that's the one job God says that you have. And John, fourteen six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John fourteen six. Let's pray together, Father. We look forward to a time when you're going to give us a lot of fun things to do. Right now, help us to obey your command, to respectfully obey our parents, and to understand that your plan for us starts right there. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Without Bible teaching in the soul, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that God exists as a rewarder 
and becomes reward for those who seek Him. Let's seek the Lord in Psalm 13. Psalm 13. This is a psalm of David. I do want to mention, in the psalms as we go through them, every now and then you'll see a little word in there. Selah is the name. In my pathetic humor, I used to say, Selah was, was what David said when he broke a string on his guitar. But that is not. Sila is musical interlude. You're singing along, and then the Sila is the just the instrumentals playing, and then you come back to the words again. Um, we do that all the time. We draw on the uh, radio and hear a song, and you be, they'll be playing along, and then just the music plays. Then you'll finish up playing along. Same thing. Psalm 13. How long, Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Let's prepare ourselves for taking in God's word with silent prayer. Thank you, Father, for your love for us. Thank you for your word, which gives us direction. We ask that you would teach us your truth so we may be able to stand in the devil's world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. David yells out to God. He demands that God answer him because he is God's child. You know how it is when you have, have, have a child and they insist that you listen to them or answer them, whatever it may be. Now, they wouldn't normally do that with a stranger. But they'll do that because you are a parent who loves them. And so, sometimes they demand things. And David does this a lot in the psalm. He gives a command to God. Listen to me. Help me. Deliver me. He doesn't, he doesn't say, yeah, I wouldn't mind if you'd help me out of this situation, you know. If you have time or, you know, if you get to it, would you please help me in this situation? We come across things in which we need divine help. And we have the right to say, God, I've got to have help here. I've got to have you answer me. Now, why do we have that right? We have that right because Jesus has paid for our sins. We have trusted in the Lord Jesus as our Savior, our eternal God, and we belong to Him. And He has promised to take care of us so we can demand God give us answers. Now, God can do it His way, of course. He knows the exact way to do it. Sometimes He'll let us wait so we can grow some more, become more mature. Sometimes... He will answer us immediately. And sometimes He'll just let it go because He knows what He's going to do with our life in maturing us and helping to make us something worthwhile in life. And we know that the people down the road will come across the same problem that we're working on and they will need our help. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? Now David knows the Scripture concerning the everlasting love 
of God about how God will always act toward us and that He will never leave us, He will never forsake us. He knows those scriptures. But He's been putting up with whatever it is. We're not told what it is because if we were told what David was going through, we'd say, well, this psalm applies just to that problem. No, it doesn't. This psalm applies to any problem which seems to be overburdening your soul. And so he said, how long, Lord, will you forget me forever? I keep asking. I keep requesting. But I'm not getting an answer. I'm not getting deliverance. How long is it going to be? How long is it going to take? David is very honest with God. Now I'm dry as a bone, so you might see me sip a walk just a little bit. Pardon me. How long will you hide your face from me? That's as if God didn't approve of his life. Just shining God's face means you have God's approval. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? and day after day have sorrow in my heart. Wrestling with our thoughts. Now this applies to us. Who has not been in this situation in life? We have all struggled with the problems we have. And that is why the Christian life is a hard life. In this sense, we're fighting against everything in this world. We're fighting against the worldview of this world because we have a contrary worldview. We're fighting against the moral, or should I say, immoral nature of this world because we want to live for the Lord and not be ashamed. We're fighting against the viewpoint that people have, which tends to help us walk away from God instead of toward God. And so, is the Christian life difficult? Yes, it is. Because we're living in the devil's world. That's why it's hard. It's easier, of course, to live around... Well, I say that. The hardest people that I've had to live around were Christians at times. That's sad, but true. But it should be easier to live around Christians when brothers dwell in unity. I expect certain things in the world, but I never expected the difficulties I'd run into when I went to a Bible college. Because I expected it from unbelievers, but I really didn't expect it from believers. And that was a great struggle for me. How long will my enemy... Uh, David says here, how long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer me. Now I would suggest we become that bold with God. He commands that God answer him. I have a great difficulty with that in my life, of commanding God to answer me. It's more like, Lord, if you please. <laughs> you know, the... The Lord of heaven and earth, the creator of the universe, the sustainer of everything. I don't feel bold enough to command he do things. But David did. That's interesting. David has such a relationship. You have to do this for me. I need you to act now. God is not scared of our commands. He's not scared of our thoughts. He's not scared of the things that we say. Our fears, our doubts, our troubles, that doesn't scare God. It doesn't shake God in any way because He knows what He's going to do with every one of those situations. Everything that comes down our path comes through the hand of Jesus Christ. We see that in the book of Job when God called all the angels into a holy convocation and all the angels, both elect and demons, were gathered. And God says to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan says, he wouldn't trust you if you took away his possessions, but you put a lot of possessions around him, and that's why he trusts you. And Satan was, and Satan said, if you take away his possessions, he won't trust you anymore. And 
God gave Satan permission to take away the possessions. Okay? Because God knew what was in Job's heart. And that Job would be faithful. But all the angels couldn't see that. And so for their instruction, this was done and written. So that for our instruction, we could understand that anyone who wants to trust the Lord, God will come through in their life and sustain them. And when all of the stuff is gone, and he's bankrupt. He has nothing. He's the wealthiest man in the world, and he comes down to zero. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I'll return to the earth. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's not usually what we say when calamity comes upon us. Well, praise the Lord. Why not? I'm in the hands of the Lord, whether it's for plenty or for very little, I'm in his hands. And he is going to take care of me. So Satan comes a second time when I have another angelic convocation down on the earth. Poor old Job. He's just a, uh, got nothing. His wife says, you know, why don't you just curse God and die? You, you can't exactly keep me in the, in the situation I'm used to living in. So uh, I could try again. So why don't you just check out? And Job is struggling. He tells his wife, now honey, we'll receive good from the hand of God. If we receive evil, it's okay. From his hand, he knows what he's doing. Meanwhile, Satan is saying, well, if he took away his health. Of course, all the angels understood Satan was wrong. That people will trust God no matter what. There are those who will trust him no matter what comes their way. And Satan said, well, if you take away his health, that'll do it. So God says, you may take away his health, but you may not kill him. That says something to us, doesn't it? Nothing can happen to you except God permits it. You have to understand that. God can permit many things in your life, and many can be terrible things in your life, but He does it because He has a better plan. We may not understand the plan, but He has a better plan. I always pray for the safety of my children and my grandchildren. I always pray for your safety whenever I bring you up in prayer. But I don't know what God wants, but I do know God will want good in your life, and He'll always want benefit in your life. And so we struggle in the Christian life just as the psalmist is talking about it. Just as Job struggled. Well, he was a special case. He was a witness in the angelic conflict. All the angels were learning about making decisions for or against God by watching Job. And every now and then God calls on someone to be a witness to the angels. David was one who became a witness in the angelic conflict. And he had many things that happened to him. He just didn't understand them. If you read the book of Job, you see Job just, Lord, why? I just don't understand. What have I done? You know, etc. He just did not understand. And many times we don't understand, nor will we understand what happened in our life until we go into eternity. But sometimes we realize God had a better plan. It may take a few days or weeks or years, but God knew what He was doing all the time. And He is good. He will only do good for you. Ours is the opportunity to trust Him. Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And there are things that seem too overwhelming to us. Just, you know, it's like, is it worth it to keep going, you know? The darkness is so overwhelming, you wonder, should I keep going? Many people can't answer that. A believer has the opportunity to answer that because you have the Holy Spirit who indwells in you. That's the same Holy Spirit who in Genesis chapter 1 remade planet Earth for our habitation. And my enemies say I have overcome him and my foes rejoice when I fall. Let me just read a passage real quick. 
in the book of uh, 1 John. It's way back there. Towards the back of your Bible. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. We'll go down to uh, verse 16. This lines out for us what is against us. And it is hard to live the Christian life because we have enemies. Notice 1 John 2, 16. For everything in the world, everything in the world, and it classifies it. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. This world has a view, and it is not a view that lets God in. We have an enemy called Satan who does not wish the best for us. We run across a viewpoint and things in life that are really contrary to walking, and the Christian life is hard. But if you want to grow, you got to get in the battle. If a weightlifter wants to be a champion, weightlifter, he doesn't lift once a week or once a month. He lifts every day. If a runner wants to be a great runner, they run and struggle every day. And we walk the Christian walk not on Sunday only or once in a while. We walk it every day. Thought, word and deed, take captive to Christ because every time you lift the weight, you're building muscle. Every time you run the track, you're building your lungs up and your legs. Every time you trust the Lord, you're building your Christian strength. And this building of your Christian strength is the struggle of the Christian life. I've told you the story, a true story. I like it because it is true. Um, man who was kind of a, a rounder. I liked to go out to the bars and party and everything else during World War II. And uh, his officers saw that he had tremendous potential. He just wasted himself away uh, drinking and crowds and whatnot. He got him to come in and he talked with him. And he talked to him about Jesus Christ who died for his sins, who offers him eternal life and a purpose in life. The young man said, that sounds wonderful, sir, but I don't think I can live it. The officer picked up a pencil off his desk. He said, who holds the pencil? Does the pencil hold me or do I hold the pencil? He said, well, sir, you hold the pencil. And that's the way it is if you give your life to the Lord. He'll hold you in his hand. He'll never let you go. It was many months later this officer jumped off a jeep when he saw this man marching out of, out of a battle situation. And he, had, he saluted him and he asked him how he's doing. And he, the young man uh, said, Sir, the Lord still holds the pencil. That's exactly true for our life. He holds us in his hand. He will never let us go. We are safe and secure no matter what. Our physical body may wane. Our mental capacity may wane. Our resources may go. And people may go from our life. The Lord will never leave us and He will never desert us. So we see, yes, we have enemies. We have those who resist our growth in Christ. The world, the flesh, and the devil. All of them are our enemies. But we have the Lord. And David says in Psalm 13, But I trust, and that's the key, if you trust the Lord, He'll come through. Not if you get more money. Not if you pray more. No, if you trust the Lord, He'll come through. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. 
I will sing the Lord's praise, for He has been good to me. But you notice at the beginning of Psalm 13, boy, if you don't come through, Father, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to be put out. It's just going to be the end. How long? How long? But then when he turns and trusts the Lord, it falls into place. And it will fall in place for us. No matter what we're facing, if we'll turn and trust the Lord with all our heart, don't rely on our own ingenuity and understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge Him. He'll come through every time. He is a faithful God who will never abandon you. Let's pray. And you, Father, when we're in our right mind, realize that you have been good to us. We have gone through many things. And we've seen other people and other believers go through many difficult things. And yet you have put them by your hand, in your hand, and have guided them through that. And what you have done in the past, we are confident you will do today. We are held in your hand, and that's where we want to be. Remind us to trust you. You are so good to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's share in communion together. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ as Savior, you're remembering that the, the, the bread, unleavened bread, represents Jesus' sinless life. There is no sin in His life. He never committed an act of sin, thought, word, or deed. And then He went to the cross and He drank down our sins, never to be seen again. And God will never bring your sins up because they're gone. And that's worth remembering what He has done for us. Excuse me, I put the wrong number up on the board. It's 399, please. We'll sing all the verses standing on the last verse. from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Lord, we truly are thankful for you. I witnessed a recreation of crucifixion at Spearfish, South Dakota. But in the summertime, the crucifixion was probably took place in two hours. And one of the most devastating thing to me was they took Jesus to the hill and placed him on the cross and the sound of the hammer and the nails that were being driven in that recreation pierced my heart he suffered for you and for me. That we might have eternal life. And we are truly thankful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
back uh, of your bulletins is a prayer list. Are there others who should be remembered? I'd like to let everyone know about a victory. Um, ben Owens is in almost pain-free right now. Um, he's on a highly experimental bed that is going to give him about a year's relief, release from what's happened to him. <clears throat> and um, I just want to let everyone know that our prayers are being answered. That has been a horrible time for him and his family, but it's, he's got a year. He just had forgotten what it felt like to, to feel good. And um, but we do need to continue praying for him because his immune system is is gone, so he can get anything. I mean, get a cold and get pneumonia, that kind of thing. So we need to pray for him, but he is doing much, much better. Where is he now? He's at home. Okay. All right. It's wonderful. Men's been through a tremendous amount. Others? Let's pray together. And Father, we thank You that we can call You our Father in Heaven. We thank You that You understand what we go through. And You're a God who has also suffered on a cross. Guide our prayer time. We would like to praise You, Father, for who and what You are, for what You've done for us, for how You've been kind and good in our life. Thank You. There's nothing we can give to repay You for Your goodness. We thank You. Let's pray for Your family, each one by name for God's blessing. We ask, Father, we would continue to trust You with our families. That You would use them in Your kingdom. That they would hear from our lips of Your goodness. Let's be praying for the three people You're praying for their salvation. Let's pray for our country and the leadership of our country. Enable us to trust You in all things, Father. <laughs> Enable us to be active in Your plan for our life. Let's look on the prayer list now and be praying for these people.
we do offer up a special prayer of thanks, Father, for Ben's progress. He's been through a lot. And we thank you that he doesn't just trust the doctors, he trusts you. Are certainly good father there are so many people you have been very good to in life and many people who don't deserve your kindness and your grace but that's how you work you bless those who are undeserving you give to those who have never given. You bless better than anyone can bless. And we thank you. Please accept the offering of our lips in praise to you. Thank you so much. Father, we ask that you would give us an understanding heart that we would understand our own families and be able to mention a word of Christ respectfully to them. We all go to doctors, Father. Let us not be so foolish as to just go to doctors. Let us go to you. Let us request you. For you are the God who has made us and sustains us and you're the God who can bring us out of the death bed, out of the sick bed, and back on our feet. Thank you for the health we have. May we use it to your glory. Thank you again, Father. You have been good to us. And we praise your name and ask that we would live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have a illness that is persistent and seems like it never goes away, or a problem in the family that always eats at you and nips at you, you can relate to the words, how long, Lord? How long? One thing we do know, God knows what He's doing. God loves more than we do. And God helps us in so many ways that we'd never be able to thank Him enough. From Him, through Him, and to Him are all things. His name is to be praised forever. Let's sing our decision hymn. 542, please. Stand, we're going to sing the first verse.
us a memory verse in your bullets. Psalm 118 8. Psalm 118 8. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. Psalm 118 8. And this week, I will be faithful to my spouse. I will speak the truth in love. I will be courageous and kind. I will be thankful. Let's pray. Father, for the many things which you have done for us, many even unspoken, for your kindness and generosity, for your sustaining ability in our life, we thank you and give you the praise. May we learn how to trust you more with every detail of our life. As we go to our places of work or our homes, as we do the jobs we need to get done, may we also be talking to you about what you have in mind for us. May we speak and live for you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.